Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. Today we are 22 of October 2024. Around the table, the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, we have Jerry Mark Waite, Stefan Merle, and Kevin Martins. Um, I didn't miss anyone. Okay. Uh, let's get started with the announcement, not so much. Uh, last week, weekly release went smoothly, no issue. Uh, the weekly release 2.482 started on time today, should be finished in one hour and a half. That's all on the releases. Uh, announcement, or at least reminder of Jenkins election are in progress. Uh, voter registration and candidate statements are available on the links on the notes. Okay, only one ad new voter since last week. Okay, right. We so we need to you. we need to be encouraging others to register if they haven't already registered. Keep sending reminders to your contributor friends and colleagues. Good. Uh, anything else on Jenkins elections? Nope. And um, so the meeting time change coming. Uh, so is it okay for everyone? That's the general question. So I'm, I'm checking right now because I'm almost sure I saw the time change for me, even though I'm on the Paris uh, time. Hmm. No, you're, you're not really in Paris, you know, that's why. So are you, no are change. you? No. Has has the time change already happened for you in in France no, or is that upcoming? Uh, it's upcoming. upcoming. Okay. But now my calendar everything is is at two p.m. So it's okay time for me this weekend. Upcoming weekend. Yes. Ah uh, yes, twenty seven. And next week, okay, no same time. So okay, I saw plenty notifications. So maybe I missed the last state and I was stuck in a transitional state. But mm. uh, it's okay for me. Is it uh, okay for everyone? Cool. Yes, it, it's okay for me. It's it it, it re returns to my usual time uh, by early December. So it's only one month that it runs that it bounces back and forth on my calendar. Early December. Oh, now I'm curious. Is yeah, there a time the, change the, the, end the of US, November? The U.S. time changes at a different point. I uh, I I'm not worried about when. That's it. By early December, it will be back to being at the usual time. Okay. And for you, Jay? Just double check. We lost it's Jay. Frozen. He, he looks frozen. frozen yeah. Yep. Oh, back. He's back. We can't we hear can... you. So you're mute. I... No, You're so you, 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 can, you can just type your answer, Jay. Yeah, no worries. I think uh, mic, mic issue. Uh, Bluetooth headphone, as usual. We'll have to improvise. <laughs> so I've put in my, assum uh, my assumed answer that it's okay with all attendees. We'll try next week. And, and Jay, we'll... if you object to that, you'll need to type something different in the chat. <laughs> cool. So let's skip that meeting time and let's continue. Thanks, Mark, for taking care of this. Uh, thanks for uh, everyone's answer. Uh, anything else on the announcements area? One, two, three, no, okay. Uh, so upcoming calendar. Next week, uh, next weekly will happen next Tuesday, 29 of October. That will be the version 2.483. Then the, the next day, that will be 30 October, Wednesday, we will have a new LTS 2.479.1. As a reminder, that uh, release will require Java 17 to run. It will also feature JT12, Spring Security 6, and many more things. So next week, Wednesday, will be a busy day for the infrastructure as we will have to cover uh, that release. 
Um, next security release, we don't have any public security release planned. We don't have any credential that we, on the calendar, on Azure, or on the pull request that will expire in the upcoming three weeks. So we are clean to work. And the next major event will be the first day, first week of February, two first day of February in Brussels, Belgium. Anything else on the calendar for you folks? So I'm adding it in the calendar, but we'll discuss later. Uh, Stefan and I agreed we will run a fifth brownout on the new update center this week from Wednesday to Thursday, 24 hours. Coming run out Oops. tomorrow the new until update uh, center Thursday. from Wednesday. Wednesday will be 30 40 UTC for 24 hours. Perfect. I'm just uh, writing in here in the calendar and that will give us some more details uh, later on the tasks. Is there any blockers or objection if we run a brownout? No major release or things that could be uh, uh, annoying, no? Okay. So this week, no. Next week, yes. Wednesday next week will be yeah. a, an important day, but this that's week- That's why one, we choose. Yeah, exactly. One of Good. the reasons why Stefan proposed that uh, to, do run, to run it this week. Good. Um, cloud budgets. Uh, we have increased a bit slightly our consumption on Azure CDF paid. Uh, the two main culprits, if we look at the past 30 days, are an increase in the public uh, case outbound bandwidth and increased DNS costs. We are built by public queries to Jenkins.io DNS zone. And yeah, it's almost yeah, it's uh, almost four hundred dollars uh, uh, per um, increase uh, monthly. Uh, I'm not sure there is anything we can do about these increases. It's not directly related on how we use resources, but on external people uses our resources. Uh, we can tell. Ex I I'm not sure if it's easy to tell where these outbound bandwidth come from. Um, we'll see. I mean, it's public cluster, so that makes sense to have a consumption here. The cost is under the boundaries we expect, so we are good. Um, and so Damien, yep. is, when you say that increase, is that an increase compared to September? Because yes. in September, our, our costs were, were dramatically lower than they've ever been before. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, I, treated September as somewhat of an anomaly. It's like, well, I don't know why that was so low and didn't didn't research to find out why. Great, okay. Yep. With the current state, we should be in the middle. We should be around 4K. So we have at least 200K, uh, but that's something we cannot control, so, or not easily. So that's fine by me. Uh, we are below the 4.5 and we still have a margin of 300. Great. Um, as your sponsorship, uh, we have a forecast at 11K. So that means since last week, the cost has decreased a bit because we were forecasted at uh, almost 30K initially. So the peak of activity has, uh, has stopped or at least is stable now. It will still be a bit more of consumption than the previous week, the months. But don't forget that in this additional cost, we have increased activity on CI Jenkins IO, but also uh, the Redis uh, database that we move from CDF account to sponsorship account inside Azure. So that also a few bugs that could explain the increase. Um, so that means we keep we still have to keep working on moving CI Jenkins IO as CI Jenkins IO, still a priority. Digital Ocean is uh, in the boundaries. We still have a bunch of credits available. Um, so, uh, what else? A slight increase because we did an operation last Thursday that require that increased the outbound bandwidth on archive Jenkins IO during one day. That's that was something uh, punctual and shouldn't be reproduced. So we are okay. Uh, same AWS clouds are 
be uh, in boundaries. The forecast look a bit pessimistic to me. I think we will be more close, closer to 6.4. Uh, but yeah, the forecast is sometimes magical. I'm doing linear uh, extrapolation while the forecast on AWS use AI, you know. So, uh, and we continue using a bit of credit on the sponsored account, still uh, prototyping, but uh, yeah, good job. I haven't updated here. I need to update it. And here, I will need to update them. I forgot them. We should have consumed 100 bucks, eventually a bit more, as soon as uh, Stefan and I start uh, uh, working on the cluster and virtual machine. But the credits consumed here are done by the work by Jay around building AMEIs with Packer. Is there any questions or topics to discuss around the cloud budgets? Nope, okay. Uh, so let's move to the notes about the task we were able to finish during the past uh, milestone. Older Debian package availability incorrect on get Jenkins IO. That problem has been fixed by the operation I mentioned uh, that happened Thursday. So that problem was because some old entries on Redis weren't uh, garbage collected because duplicated or orphaned. We reached the moment where some mirrors did start to remove the file. So the garbage collector removed one of the two entries, but not the duplicated or orphaned one. So Mirrorbit was mistakenly redirecting users to mirrors, even if the file wasn't available, resulting in page not found. So we did, uh, we did uh, let's say, a really a brutal version. We wiped up the Redis database and scanned everything again. So now we have an order of magnitude for this operation. It takes two hours and a half for, for mirror bits to scan all the files so they can calculate checksum and have a trace of any files. That's all files, all plugins, all history, everything. And then it takes 15 to 20 minutes uh, to scan all mirrors and compare their files with the list of files generated before. So it's almost three hours of the system is working and all the traffic is successfully sent to the fallback, which is archive Jenkins IO. So we solved the issue. We validated that the fallback mechanism works very well. That's good news. I've checked the access log on, uh, Gen on uh, archive Jenkins IO and I don't see a lot of 404 errors, which is really good, which means we have a fallback and we can anticipate operations in the future on get Jenkins. Are there any questions on that topic? Things to clarify, details? Nope, okay. Uh, CI Jenkins IO as your credential. We had a credential to rotate that I did it because uh, day I was alone and I did not read correctly all the instruction on the pull request leading on uh, an availability of Docker agent on CI Jenkins IO during a few hours. So when we renew Azure credential, we have to restart controller because the Azure VM plugin, I don't know, seems to, to keep some cache and is not enabled to renew the cache unless it's restarted. It's written on the documentation and I I didn't do the action. So sorry for the inconvenience. We had an issue open about that and it has been fixed. Maybe we should put that in, in bold. In the... No, I did it late my time and I should have waited for the next day. That's a human error and I'm not sure except self-discipline. I don't see other uh, ways to fix it. Reminder, CI Jenkins I use a public instance, so we don't use instance metadata or instance identity for this, uh, for safety. We should get rid of this credential rotation on trusted and cert, which are private uh, instances now. Uh, next issue, so there were issue regarding uh, uh, Docker plugin site issues uh, project, which is a website used to generate plugin Jenkins IO every three hours or so. Uh, the problem has been fixed. It was a GitHub permission errors. 
And thanks, uh, Adrien and Zbinek, on, on, that, on the help here for confirming and fixing the uh, more pipeline errors. One of the problems now on the data center that we had during the past brownout, that problem has been fixed. Many thanks for Daniel Beck for sharing history, knowledge, and ideas with us. He helped us a lot and validated some uh, uh, of our assumptions. So we had two alternatives, either using absolute links or fixing the problem by serving files on Apache instead of the mirrors. We, we are ending on doing both. Right now, we still have relative links, and the problem is fixed with the serving file from Apache. That's just the low bandwidth based on our measurements. Uh, but Daniel was also interesting on the absolute link solution because it will enforce a canonical URL for updates Jenkins IO and an HTTPS scheme, which is really interesting for, let's say, silently forcing some kind of request to HTTPS, but not changing the, the redirection scheme chain. So that's interesting for the update center itself. Uh, that absolute link will be delivered by Daniel later. It's not mandatory for us for the update center and it will continue working as expected. So in any case, we are covered. That was the opportunity to do a detailed analysis on the usage of the update center. So today, the current production serve a bit more than two terabyte of JSON data per day. That's huge. That's a whole hard drive of my NAS each day sent to uh, to users. So that's quite impressive. Are there any questions on CI Jenkins? Are you credential project update center? Nope. Okay. Another task finished on the top priority list. Uh, thanks, Stefan and Jay. Uh, Jay, you did the heavy work. Stefan, you mentored Jay when I was in early days. So thanks to that huge work, we are now able to publish our Amazon MEI images with Packer image, with the same content as what we have on Docker and uh, Azure VMs for our controller agents. So of course, the next step will be Windows, but yeah, good job. Now it's published and we have released two versions already. Finally, we had two spam related issues. Thanks, Mark, for taking care of uh, these users, these non users. <laughs> okay, any question on the work that was finished, done? Did I forget something? Okay. Now let's move on the work in progress by order of priority. So, tasks that are open, we are working, we walked in, and we continue working in. If you feel like that one of these tasks is worth delaying, please raise your voice. Top level priority is the update center. Um, so we still have one issue, which is not a direct threat to the brownout. Uh, after a few hours serving requests and changing files, uh, it looks like that the Samba uh, file share start to present empty files to Apache. So of course, the .ht access being empty, no redirection happened, and we start to see 404 errors at the moment on time. Restarting the Apache, which happened once per hour, solved the problem. So we are self-resilient. However, it's still uh, quite annoying. So there are different solutions. Our initial stance was, hey, let's try using NFS, which is fully POSIX compliant, while a Samba CFS isn't. However, uh, I've discovered that if we move to NFS, we need to create a brand new file share, and we cannot use AZ copy anymore. So moving to NFS means changing a bit the architecture because we will need a pod with AirSync being able to write, and we will need to set up the network route. And change credential on the update center. It's not a problem. However, if we have to change the architecture, I would prefer using a side container and local empty deals instead of a shared persistent volume. For the upcoming brownout, my proposal is that first, we will start by fine tuning the, the mount option for the uh, Samba share. 
And we will also fine tune Apache to tell him that his um, document root is located on a shared network directory because Apache could adapt uh, their, let's say, behavior that would increase a bit the memory used by Apache, but that might fix the problem. If it fixed the problem, let's go with that tuning. That's why we need uh, to have a full uh, brownout because I cannot reproduce the problem. I tried with a script running for three hours, hitting the new update center, and I wasn't able to reproduce it. So there might be a combination of factors. If that's okay, is does it look safe to everyone to try this? And we will, so that means I still need some work on the Apache configuration and Samba update. I will shut down the service, update the config, start it again. And once done, we can proceed starting tomorrow. Yes, so we do that before the brownout. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, most probably, what might happen is since we cannot reproduce that issue, if we cannot reproduce during the 24 hours, it might happen again once we will be in production. We never know because we are speaking about a distributed system. If that's the case, I propose we, we will fix the service, but that means we might want to keep the old production up and running if we need to do fixes on that service, at least for one month. Why, why, why not? more than that there's no cost uh, except except the time the machine the cost. yes no. but also the machine cost it it's cl clearly that will be a huge difference if we move production okay. to the new system but still the machine has a few gigabyte of data and some cpus that we need to pay for we can stop it and start it if we need that could be a solution uh, so brownout number five we have solved the functional problem and we still have potential operational problems. And just a note for later, uh, potential, potential uh, pub publication to optimize. So we, we will discuss uh, further with Daniel about the time it requires for the update center to build and publish. It takes around two, two and a half minutes to generate the metadata. And then it take it take us three to five minutes to publish them, which means seven to eight minutes total. It used to be less than three minutes. Right now we have set up the job to run every 10 minutes. It's not a blocker as per Daniel and from our point of view, but still we see a room for optimization. Additionally, during the, the last advisory, uh, Daniel cooked a slight issue. We publish some data too soon in the process. So during one or two minutes, in the specific case of a new Jenkins core version, the update center might answer a hey, file not found until everything is published everywhere. Not blocker as per Daniel because it's a, it doesn't happen often and it's it's quickly fixed at the end but we know that we could optimize this in the future. We have identified the root cause, but that's not a blocker because that's something that happens four to six times a year during two minutes. So that's 12 minutes of an availability per year. That's clearly uh, something we can, uh, we can say that's fine. At least Daniel says no need to fix this, just awareness. Anything else on the update center? Question, clarification? One, two, three, no, okay. Let's move to the second top level priority, moving CI Jenkins IO from Azure to AWS. So as we say, the, now we have Linux AMI, so Jay is working on the ephemeral agent and is working on rep uh, starting the EC2 plugin, configuring it, uh, and trying to start a temporal, uh, ephemeral agents with the new Linux AMI. That's an opportunity for Jay to start learning how to do the setup, even though we used to have code and configuration uh, one year ago. And as a side, uh, let's say a uh, subtask, there is a garbage collector for this AMI that we now are building 
Uh, that garbage collector should be set up. We will go on more details Jay, on this one. We might want to run the garbage collector on a distinct jobs. So we will separate concern between building AMEIs, the current Packer image, another pipeline that would garbage collect only main brown from time to time, and then updates on update CLI. That's not the priority right now. That will that will be soon, but right now your priority is to validate the Linux AMI you built by spinning agent from your local controller. Um, so Jay, uh, you should have a ci.go IAM user created with permission. So AJ ready to test EC2 plugin locally. Is there any question about the ephemeral virtual machine agents? Okay. Uh, I've moved to delay triage. So for next week, adding the Windows image. Where is it? I lost it. Oh, it's done the new things here. I don't think uh, we will have enough time to start working on it, okay? If you start uh, working on it, Packer IAM user now has the proper permissions. So there were permission missing in order to spin up Windows machines on AWS that has been fixed. So if you need to work on it, uh, everything is ready to roll, Jay. Any questions? Okay, Stefan, can you give us a heads up on the, uh, not the controller, but the other, oh, I lost it. It's here. The actual networking? Uh, yep. No, uh, cry, uh, create private EKS cluster with side services, which should, oh. uh, which is a pre prerequisite for moving ephemeral Linux container agents to AWS. That will be fast. I've done nothing yet. Okay. So I, um, yep. tend to finish the the update CLI for um, the Windows images that I had to um, to pin mm -hmm. and the GeoIP that I need to create. But yes, that's the new main uh, task I have is the yep. AKS the, on the, the new top priority images. task. If you have to delay GeoIP, uh, we, we are delaying GeoIP. That's really important. The first mm -hmm. step for you, we start, that's not completely true what you said. You started to work on it. We had a, a preliminary discussion about some oh, requirements, yeah. about which kind of I am user, which kind of permission, which kind of technical account on Kubernetes will be used where. So uh, right now, uh, drafting, the permissions and airbag needs. So that's the new task. I will add it to the new milestone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Virtual networking for AWS. Um, I'm keeping it open because I know that both you with EKS and me on the next task with the controller, we will need to do back and forth. So on hold, uh, missing security groups at least. We know we will have tasks to do, but right now we don't know which one, so we will work on the other and that one will come back. One last step, uh, move controller virtual machine to AWS. So um, uh, that's on me, started to write a Terraform module um, for this one. So why a Terraform module? Because we might need, first, we might need in the future to move trusted and cert. However, that sentence is just over engineering from me. But we also have a module today for Azure controller. So that's why mapping on two modules, we will have exactly the same usage, whether we have CI on one cloud or the other. Any question on this one? Okay, uh, two update CLI tasks. Uh, 
So where did we were delayed because the poor Jay had a, fe a fever. You were uh, you weren't able to to walk at all. So that will mean you will have to work on this uh, on the upcoming milestone. Yeah, it should I, be done in a year too. So KK and Andrew are working on updating the statistics still. I haven't checked uh, the repository uh, since yesterday, but yesterday it wasn't up to date. So on hold and next week, if we don't have news, then we'll start pushing uh, a bit more. All the GSOC tasks were on hold uh, since uh, Stefan was off and Jay was ill. Uh, I didn't have time to, to work on these uh, secondary tasks. I will resume work on this. On the new issue, as we mentioned, we had the new cluster to create. So the first fundamental cluster, and we start man managing it from infra CI as drafted by Stefan. And then we will work on start using it on the Jenkins controller. So we need to prepare some element, namespace, permissions, etc. Stefan, you mentioned GeoIP database. Are there updates on that topic? Uh, yes, I did manage to test the, the service principle created in the, with the application, and it did work. I was able to um, uh, um, see, at least from my computer, that everything was working fine. So now I got everything. Um, in order, I need to uh, publish that in a new uh, repository um, and to make sure that everything is set up for the image, Docker image building and publishing and everything. Okay. And then next step, the M chart for the cron job, right? Exactly. Good. So I'm adding it on the new milestone since, since you're back. Uh, but priority is clearly lower than uh, uh, than working on EKS. Mm -hmm. But since creating an EKS cluster takes 20 minutes to 30 minutes and editing is the same amount of time, you see what uh, <laughs> you might you want to You think I will not that. be able to do that in one time? I mean, I will have to be... No. <laughs> um, we have a new issue open by... Uh, by uh, Hervé, thanks Hervé for that. Um, Docker unveiled a Terraform provider for the Docker Hub quite recently, like last week or this week. That's really useful. So that's more targeted for um, uh, Mark, Stefan, and eventually we'll let uh, our uh, uh, platform SIG leader, uh, Bruno, to know. It's mean we, Jenkins Infra team should be able to provide us code, the definition for each Docker Hub image on the Docker Hub for Jenkins and Jenkins Infra, and along with the permissions. That will be really useful to see uh, who has which permission. Uh, I propose that we will start defining it, so, let's say later this year, for Jenkins Infra only, such as the image that Stefan is going to create and that kind of setup. So that means we will need to initialize a new Terraform repository. We create connection, and then we have infrastructure as code here. So we will need to assess, but that will be really useful because that will avoid people doing manual steps every time. So this, along with the GitHub, uh, the existing GitHub provider on Terraform, that's also an area where we could improve things. For GitHub, we have a smaller scope on the GitHub apps, but again, these things are painful when managed by humans, so we can improve that. Uh, food, food for thought for later. For now, I propose that we move that issue to the backlog because we don't have physical time to work on it. It's a legit one, but it's less prior than AWS credit usage and uh, update center. Any question, need for clarification? Nope, okay. Uh, I've delayed the tree age and I propose we will consider this issue next week. If you feel differently during the milestone and have finished all your tasks, then you can start picking these, but they will stay and remain in tri-edge state. 
We have uh, another update CLI example, which is uh, we get configuration from one repo and have update CLI, update it on another repo. Uh, we have a task around ECR pull through cache on the new AWS stuff, ACI agent, so Windows ephemeral agent in the form of container to move inside Kubernetes. We need uh, Stefan to finish his work before being able to do this one. Uh, Windows MEIs, so maybe we could, AJ, if you're efficient, but don't make it uh, a goal at all, please. <laughs> we take our time, we will work on it in two weeks. And the rest are GDK21 stuff. That's all for me. So I propose I'm gonna work on the triage of all these tasks and we will proceed. Are there other tasks? that I forgot or you want to add to the milestone or you want to to discuss about? Yes, I want to finish my pull request on update CLI for the pin images for Windows. I merged it uh, two, oh. one or two hours ago because it was working well. It was green. I, by the way, it was green, by the way, Stefan. Even on a draft pull request, and that's that's the same for Jay, you do not add and commit commented code. That doesn't have any sense. That, that's what I plan to do before merging, but you, you were faster than me. No <laughs> problem. But as a reflex, as a reflex, don't use a git stash or use a annotation method with your idea. But yeah, avoid commented code and committing commented code. Okay, so I think I think Damien and I may have a disagreement on this one. That's that's fun. I that's have okay. to, but it's recorded, so I'm I'm not saying anything. <laughs> All right. No, no. So, that's a, uh, so I want to trigger the discussion. Uh, I, I I don't want to be rude and impose an idea. I'm open. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm open to this. It's just that every time I've seen Stefan and Jay do do it, every time that has been uh, uh, lead, leading them to uh, errors directly related to having the commented lines. Either you did uh, copy and paste errors or you went on another road uh, instead of focusing on a task at stake. It creates uh, and it parasites, I think, the focus process of your brains. I don't say you shouldn't comment and keep comments. It's just every time, every time I can tell uh, uh, that's as, and I think it could be a great exercise trying not to, you will see direct improvement. That's specific to our team. I, I don't. I, I I I embrace differences of opinion. That's fun because I <laughs> I make I tend to make lots of comments when I'm thinking in my code, and I tend to tend to commit those and then squash them out when I'm done before I before I merge. So okay, but I, it's fair. I'm, hey, I'm I have also, a, I have yeah. a different question though, unrelated to the controversy about whether or not we should do with so. JDK upgrades. I didn't. I don't recall seeing it. Did I miss it in the list, or is it just we'll get them when when Adoptium does finishes their builds on all the targets? Uh, good point. We forgot. Uh, is there any objection if we create an issue to track it? I don't. This... I don't know that we even need an issue because we tend to get them automatically. Right. Yes, when... it's probably. Pull request, but not the issue. So we will probably have pull request when all the all the platforms are, are built. And but... and we certainly don't want them before all the platforms are available. So for me, I'm not sure an issue is even needed. I've been using them incrementally, but System 390 is not available yet, for instance. And Windows JDK 8 is not available yet. And all sorts of things like that, where they're still going through their process. So I'm not sure an issue even helps us. It, it just... We the tooling right now will will generate a pull request when it detects it, right? Yep. Yeah, the, but we the, need to make sure that. <laughs> yes, exactly. The oh. issue the issue should be a regular base from us for awareness, okay. like the Maven updates. Uh, we already have merge pull requests on the Packer image, but it's not released yet. And at I think it's GDK seventeen. One of the four GDK has already been updated in the Jenkins tools. So okay. we we st we already had a pull request during the past days during the six past days. Uh, I saw the GDK eight on Packer image, so we will need to check that our update CLI manifest either is correct or 
uh, that maybe Windows GDK 8 is available. I don't know, but we need to check because I thought we were checking all platform that we need before updating. Oh, oh so so the Packer the Packer generation process is check is is building both Windows and Linux. I was assuming it was only building yeah. Linux. No, no, it's yeah, also but... building. It's a not on AWS though, but it should it, it will be yes. Uh, on Azure, oh, we be, on oh. Azure we build, and and I was wrong. Eight is now available for for Windows. Maybe I was just no. Apparently, it arrived yesterday, so eight is yeah, definitely available is. for Windows. So so I was wrong. It's 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 certainly now there. Four thirty two is now there for that Windows. Was... That were worth checking and asking the question. I confirm we check for the presence of all platform that we built, thanks mm -hmm. to the work of Bruno and uh, and Hervé. And uh, that's the code on my screen. So yeah, we check them. Great, and and I see Windows for all of them. And then the next check for me was my friendly local uh, mainframe, and it's still old. Okay, so the the so our our tooling upgrade is still blocked, waiting for system three ninety. Okay, thanks. Yes, which by the way allowed me to detect uh, an issue on the Timurin API that I reported to them. Oh, oh, good. Yes. Okay. They yes, they tell you that the latest version on some endpoints uh, is the latest available, even if you say I want only for S three ninety X. And they give you the new version instead of the real life last version available, oh, but just so on they... one endpoint. Okay. Uh, just just a, a back and forth about the comments. Uh, I was taunting everyone, and I don't want to impose any opinion, but I think it's quite the exercise. Try uh, either what Mark proposed or what I, I'm proposing. And if it's okay for everyone, I don't mind checking if we could have a GitHub action a check that says, oh, I see commented code um, inside. I think that could be a great opportunity for using AI on the area. AI for comments looks something not dangerous at all because mm -hmm. AI only have to check, hey, does this commented line looks like an older line or a closer line? LLM will be really good at this. And by the way, I saw now three different person, including one at CloudBees, that are using a LLM system to write their commands. They write their code, they remove commands, and they ask the LLM to write commands to explain the code. And I thought that was a smart thing. So that's the, the topic I wanted to bring. I think we might mm. have opportunity because if I don't want command, I need to bring you a tool that will tell you, hey, don't forget to remove your command. I think that's the outcome. Uh, instead mm -hmm. of criticizing, I should be, uh, I should provide valuable uh, checks here. Yeah. I, I like the, I like the idea. Well, I like the idea. I would love to find something useful to do with, with a large language model. I really would. That would be cool. I haven't yet. So. That's all for me. Anything else, folks? OK, so I'm stopping screen sharing. So I'm going to stop recording for people watching us on YouTube. See you next week.